Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is the second lecture from Astronomy and Astrophysics. In the previous lecture, we discussed about some basic astronomical skills. That means, we discussed about brightness and apparent magnitude of a star. We also find the relationship between them using Poxon's law. In this lecture, we mainly focus about luminosity, radiant flux and absolute magnitude of a star. And we will try to find the relationship between them. At the end of this lecture, uh, we also discussed about volumetric magnitude and color index of a star. So without wasting any time, let's get into the video. The apparent magnitude and brightness of a star do not give us any idea of the total energy emitted per second by the star. This is obtained from radiant flux and luminosity of a star. The luminosity of a body is defined as the total energy radiated by it per unit time. Whereas, radiant flux at a given point is the total amount of energy flowing through per unit time per unit area of a surface oriented normal to the direction of propagation of radiation. To understand this properly, we have to consider this figure. Here, this star emits radiation in the all direction. The energy emitted per unit time by this star in the all direction is called the luminosity of this star. Out of this energy, the amount of energy which cross through unit area of this surface which is situated perpendicularly to the flow of radiation is the radiant flux. That means the amount of energy crossing through unit area perpendicular to the flow of radiation per unit time is the radiant flux at this point. This is the definition of radiant flux and this is the luminosity. Clearly, the unit of luminosity is arc per second whereas the unit of radiant flux is arc per second per centimeter square. The radiant flux of a source depends on two factors. Number one, the radiant energy emitted by it. Here, radiant energy means energy radiation of all wavelengths, not just visible light. And number two, the distance of the source from the point of observation. To understand this, again we see the figure. The radiant flux at that point depends the distance from the source and the point that means this value of r now we can relate the radiant flux and luminosity by equation 1 like this f is equal to l by 4 pi r square where f is radiant flux and l is luminosity how this relation can be reached suppose a star is at a distance r from the point of observation. Let us draw an imaginary sphere of radius r round the star. The surface area of that sphere is 4 pi r square. Now, energy radiated by the star in all direction is L, which is luminosity. Out of that energy, Crossing, per, uh, crossing through unit area of that imaginary sphere is L by 4, par, 4 pi r square, which is nothing but radiant flux. Clearly, this relation shown in equation 1, F is equal to L by 4 pi r square. The luminosity of a stellar object is a measure of the intrinsic brightness of the star. It is expressed generally in the units of solar luminosity L theta, which is equals to 4 into 10 to the power 26 watt or 4 into 10 to the power 33 arc per second. For example, the luminosity of our galaxy is about 10 to the power 11 L theta. Now, the energy from a source received at any place determines the brightness of the source. This implies that radiant flux F is related 
to the brightness b of the source the brighter the source the larger would be the radiant flux at that place therefore the ratio of brightness can be replaced by the ratio of radiant flux from two objects at the same point and we have equation 2 again from this equation it is seen that the flux received at a place also depends on its distance from the source therefore two stars of the same apparent magnitude may not be equally luminous as they may be located at different distances from the observer a star's apparent brightness does not tells us anything about the luminosity of the star we need a measure of the true or intrinsic brightness of a star now we could easily compare the true brightness of stars if we could line them all up at the same distance from us with this idea we define the absolute magnitude of a star which is the magnitude it would have if it were placed at a standard distance of 10 parsec from the observer to understand this let us consider this situation here apparent magnitude and brightness are small m and b m respectively at distance d parsec of this star but if now the star be placed at a distance 10 parsec its brightness and its magnitude would be changed let b m capital m suffix and capital m are the brightness and magnitude respectively at the distance 10 parsec which is capital d now we have this relation from this relation we can write this here we replace n by capital m and b n by b n by capital b m again we have brightness is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the star and the point of observation that means b proportional to 1 by r square in this context this equation can be written as like this here b capital m is proportional to 1 by capital d square d capital d is equal to 10 parsec and b small m proportional to 1 by small d square considering this if we take the ratio b capital m by b small m we get small d by capital d whole square simplifying this we get the blocked equation it is a measure of distance and is called distance modulus if we calculate apparent brightness or magnitude and find the distance of the star in astronomical unit then we can find the absolute magnitude of the star by using this equation alternatively distance modulus can be written as this equation also we can also relate the absolute magnitude of stars to their luminosities from this equation we know that the ratio of radiant flux of two stars at the same distance from the point of observation is equal to the ratio of their luminosities that means f2 by f1 is equal to l2 by l1 here we consider r is equal to constant for the two stars having different luminosities l2 and l1 thus if m1 and m2 are the absolute magnitudes of two stars then using this equation we can relate their luminosities to m1 and m2 as this or finally we can write the blocked equation as you seen in the screen thus absolute magnitude of a star is a measure of its luminosity or intrinsic brightness the stellar magnitude discussed till now cover only some limited region or ranges of the stellar spectrum specifically on the visible range 
द स्टेलर मैग्नीट्यूड बेस्ड ऑन द रेडिएशन मेजर्ड ओवर द एंटायर रेंज ऑफ इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक स्पेक्ट्रम आर कॉल्ड बोलोमेट्रिक मैग्नीट्यूड एगेन व्हाट आर द कलर इंडेक्स ऑफ द स्टार वी हैव टू नो दिस आल्सो सिंस द कलर ऑफ लाइट डिपेंड्स ऑन वेवलेंथ स्टार्स ऑफ डिफरेंट टेंपरेचर विल अपीयर बी ऑफ डिफरेंट कलर्स इट इज एन ऑब्जर्व फैक्ट दैट आवर आई इज मोर सेंसिटिव टू येलो एंड ग्रीन लाइट्स वेयर एज फोटोग्राफिक प्लेट्स आर मोर सेंसिटिव टू ब्लू लाइट thus the photographic and photovisual magnitudes of the same star at the same temperature are not same the difference between the photographic and photovisual magnitudes of a star is known as scalar index this is hope you enjoy this video please subscribe or follow my channel for future video notification if you have some suggestions or doubt you can write in the comment section below thanks for watching this video